again to the midweek Bible class, Bible study for the Southside Church of Christ here in Orlando, Florida. I'm Wesley T. Leonard, the senior minister of this great growing uh, influential congregation. I'm privileged again to serve with visionary elders, industrious deacons, and we have a church full, a plethora of people who are determined to make King Jesus our choice in life and to persuade others that they should follow God's Son, His only begotten Son, for that is the only pathway to heaven. It's again my joy and my privilege to, to address you and we collectively and collaboratively study God's book, the Bible, in an effort that we will be more knowledgeable of what God expects, what God requires, and that we can implement those principles and concepts and precepts into our daily walk with Christ. Beloved, I uh, want to friendly offer a friendly reminder that you can follow us on Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube, Southside uh, app, sscoc.org, and the uh, Southside website. Uh, I want to remind you and inform you that we're still having some technical, minor technical difficulties that will be alleviated soon and very soon. We have already ordered whole new soundboard, whole new sound system, whole new lighting system. 
we want to make our broadcast amongst the best uh, online, and uh, we are going to invest into that. In the meantime, hang in there with us. Uh, those minor technical de uh, difficulties will be alleviated uh, soon and very soon. Beloved, let's continue to pray with each other, for one another, uh, those who are sick, those who are maimed, those who are doomed, damned, destitute, and bereaved, let's lift them up in prayer. Those who are just going through to going through, uh, let's continue to pray. I want to encourage all of you again and again. I don't know what to say besides just say it. You need to get vaccinated. Every piece of data suggests that uh, you need to be vaccinated. Uh, corona is raging again. It is out of control. Numbers as high as they've ever been. Not for us who are vaccinated. 99% of the people who are being affected now, the non-vaccinated people. And so I encourage you, I can't make you do anything, but I encourage you uh, to be vaccinated. Beloved, let's tonight look at a discipline that's always uh, important and uh, impactful for the Christian. I want to talk to you tonight about the essence of faith. The essence of faith faith. Uh, one of the key components uh, the Christian must possess is faith. Uh, faith is a key to getting us into Christ, and faith is a key to keeping us in Christ. Beloved, I want to express uh, how this key fundamental ingredient of faith works in the daily life of the child of God. Uh, faith is required to have a meaningful relationship with God, and really faith is required to have a meaningful relationship with others. Uh, faith is what you believe that you can't see. It's what you trust that you can't verify. Listen to me again, beloved. Faith is what you believe that you really can't see and it's what you trust in that sometimes you can't even verify. I want to hasten uh, to inform you that faith is not blind acceptance. Uh, listen to me again. Faith is not a blind acceptance. Um, faith is believing something with good reason when you can't substantiate or verify. Uh, I, I want three umbrellas I want to operate on tonight uh, um, dealing with the essence of faith. Uh, first, I want to deal with the nature of faith. Secondarily, I deal with the evidentiary nature of faith. And then I deal with the nature of Christian faith. I want to deal with broadly, just, just the term faith, the nature of faith. Then we'll look at some evidentiary exponents of the nature of faith. And then we'll look at the nature of the Christian faith. What I'm trying to tell you is everybody has faith in something or somebody. Everybody exercises faith on a daily basis. But there's a difference between the Christian's faith and general faith. And what evidence do we have, evidentiary uh, faith for the child of God? Uh, it's not blind acceptance. We believe what we believe with good reason, even when we cannot uh, support it with empirical data or substantiate it uh, with physical evidence. The Hebrew writer reminds us the biblical definition, now we under now the nature of faith. The biblical definition of faith, according to Hebrews 11 and 1, he says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. And then Hebrews 11 and 6 uh, piggybacks off that and declares emphatically, without faith, it's impossible to please God for he that cometh to God must first believe that he is and that he's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So, blood, here's what the Bible says. Faith is the substance. 
It sub is a prefix that means below. Faith is what you stand on. You take your stance, but you have a sub stance. Your stance has to have something to stand on. Faith is that for the child of God. Faith is the substance of things we hope for, but the evidence of things not seen. Now, for years, I didn't understand this concept. That's not a blind faith. That, that's not a blind acceptance, rather. It's the evidence of things not seen. The Bible didn't say there's no evidence. He just said you can't see the evidence. Like, I know that the wind blows, but I can't see the wind. But I got evidence. I see the, I see the leaves and the trees, and uh, I see, I see uh, the grass leaning and the flowers leaning. I see paper uh, floating down the street. I know there's wind, but I can't see it. But the moving of the elements is evidence. I can't see what I'm talking about when you can't see the wind, but there is evidence. Okay. So all I'm saying is faith is not a blind acceptance. I've often said again and again, let me share it with you again tonight, beloved, for those who are new to our broadcast. Faith then is believing something is so, even when it does not appear to be so, in order that it might become so, simply because the God says so. Faith is believing that something is so, even when it does not appear to be so, in order that it might become so, simply because God says so. That's faith. Faith is a strong conviction of belief and trust in something or somebody. We're not convinced by what we see we're convinced about what God says. Hear me again. Uh, God wants to know, can you believe me or your lying eyes? <laughs> We're not convinced, the child of God is not convinced by what we see. We're convinced by what God says. That's what his faith is. Okay, man says, show me and I'll believe you. God says, believe me and then I'll show you. You, you're not getting it, beloved. It's hanging there with me tonight. His man's philosophy. Show me, and then I'll believe you. God says, no, believe me, and then I'll show you. That's what faith is. All homo sapiens have faith. It's a part of our daily existence. You believe in things you've never actually verified. You, how do you know your parents are actually your parents? You... you most of you haven't done a DNA test to make sure your parents has your deoxyribonucleic acid. You were told that, so you believe it. And with good cause. There's no reason for somebody to keep you around 18 years feeding you for free if they're not your parents. But you never saw the evidence. Uh, who, when they told you George Washington was the first president of the United States, you believed it. You didn't research it. You didn't go to Washington, D.C. to the Smithsonian Institution to search the archives of the historical books of the history of the United States. You believed it. Uh, you, you, didn't, you and I don't get on airplanes or buses or even get in cars and seek records of service and maintenance. I get on an airplane. I plan to get on one. Um, not too long now. My wife and grandson just got on one uh, a few days ago. Nobody gets on the plane and says, hey, let me see. Did y'all fuel up this plane? Uh, what's the maintenance record? What's the maintenance performance? You don't even go into the plane and ask the pilots to see their credentials and make sure that they are certified, bona fide, uh, credentialed pilots. We don't do that. We just believe that Southwest Air, American Airlines, and Delta wouldn't have somebody in there who ought not be there. We just have faith. If you can believe in things and in people, certainly Christians ought to have faith in God. Somebody asked me about not getting the vaccine, right? And they asked me, says, uh, uh, well, 
Where's your faith? And I explained to them, it takes faith to get the shot as well as it takes faith not to get the shot. It just matters what you believe in. I believe the research has been done. I can't verify it. I can't, I didn't know if I'd die or lose my left arm or right eye. Folks, all of us exercise faith in something. For the Christian, the nature of faith, the very essence of our faith for the child of God is that we don't have to have proof, but we do have evidence. Y'all not hear what I'm saying? You see, I believe God and have faith and confidence and trust in God because of the historical record of God. I don't have to have everything verified, affirmed, reaffirmed, validated, and revalidated. I don't have to have evidence. I believe God because he said it. That's faith, beloved. That's the nature of faith. Number two, what's the evidentiary nature of faith? Uh, what, what evidence, since we don't have proof all the time, but we do have evidence. God's historical record is unparalleled. It is without question uh, worthy of our allegiance. Uh, it's worthy of our acceptance. Uh, beloved, the evidentiary nature of faith and the things that are unseen. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, Paul writes to Christians at Corinth. Paul reminds them again that we walk by faith and not by sight. So we, we are like Ray Charles and Stevie Wonder. <laughs> uh, we feel our way through life. We walk, and it's hard to walk when you can't see. Paul talking about spiritually. We walk by faith and not by sight. If you can see it, it's not faith. If you don't see it before you see it, we're talking about spiritually. If you don't see it before you see it, you'll never see it. All right? If you don't see where you're going before you get where you're going, when you get where you're going, you won't know where you are. Preach, Brother Leonard. If you don't see where you're going before you get where you're going, when you get where you're going, you won't know where you are. Faith does not change what you see. Faith changes how you process what you see. Okay? If all you see is what you see, then you are not seeing what God wants you to see. I feel myself, I feel my Moxima Mojo coming now. If all you see is what you see, then you're not seeing what God wants you to see. Faith is not jumping to conclusions. Faith is coming to the conclusion to jump. I'm saying again tonight, beloved, every man, woman, boy, and girl in the sound of my voice tonight exercise a certain level of faith. That is believing or trusting is a great word. It's a kindred word of faith. Uh, you trust in people and things that you don't verify. It don't mean that they don't have the credentials or the evidence. You just, you don't even seek to verify it. You don't, you don't give them the third degree. You don't ask for receipts. You just trust it. Okay, you're not getting me. Many of us go to a doctor whose name we can't pronounce, who has a degree we can't verify. We take off our clothes and get stark naked in front of this stranger. We put our clothes back on. He writes you a prescription you can't read. You take it to a pharmacist you don't know, and you start taking medicine you don't understand. Because you got faith. <laughs> You got trust in that process. You never met the man or woman. Can't pronounce the name. You don't go home and Google and make sure they went to medical school. They prescribe medicine that you can't even pronounce. You take it to this pharmacist behind a counter that you never met. They put something in a bottle or in a can 
And you start taking it once, twice, three times a day because they said so. That's trust. That's faith. They do have evidence of their credentials, but you don't verify it. If you can do that with a doctor or a lawyer or a professional, God's saying, why you want me to verify everything? Why? Because I said so. That's what God is saying. I grew up in a world where children didn't get to question the parents. Why you do that? Because I said so. That's what children were told when I grew up in the 60s and 70s. We had trust and faith that our parents had the best interest in mind, even when we didn't understand it. And that's all our father. That's why the Bible says it's a privilege to call him Abba Father. We have to believe and know that we can trust God even when we can't trace God. God has integrity with you and I. You have to believe that, that he has my best interest. You got to believe that. You got to believe that nothing happens without his knowledge. You got to believe that. You got to believe what Romans 8, 28 says, for we know that all things are working to good, working together for good for them that love the Lord and who are the call according to his uh, purpose. You got to believe that. So Paul reminds us, we walk by faith, not by sight. Folks, that's based on something. That's based on experience. Uh, that, 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 that's based on uh, going through the going through. You see, the worst thing you can do to a blind person is move the furniture in their house. Because they know where everything is. They don't walk by sight. But they know where everything is. It's experience that lets them walk. They blind, no sight, but they know where everything is from experience. And I'm trying to teach you tonight, remind you tonight, that Christians, members of the blood bought heaven bound, Christ Center, Hell Proof Church, the Church of Christ, Christians have to know and believe that God has orchestrated and navigated and postured and positioned things in our life not based on what we can see, but based on our trust and confidence in him. Yes, you, you have to have faith to get the vaccine. I guess you got to have faith not to get it. Just depends on what you believe in. I took a flight to Jerusalem, to Israel last year. Pam and I did. Left Orlando, flew to Miami, left Miami, flew to Barcelona, Spain, had a little trouble there, had to stay there three days. Then flew from there to Tel Aviv in Israel. Then sojourned all over Israel for eight days. I did the same when I had the privilege on a couple of occasions, two different, to fly uh, to the continent of Africa. Actually flew to South Africa, bottom of the earth down there. Cape Town, Robbins Island, Johannesburg, uh, Durban, Port Elizabeth and Soweto and Venda, all of the, the country flying. Interesting enough, we flew from here to Miami. I was a 40 minute flight, then took a 10 hour flight to Barcelona, then a five hour, six hour flight to Tel Aviv in Israel. The flight I had the most trouble on was a 40 minute flight from Orlando to Miami. Pam will tell you, you talking about a scary flight. I can't remember the last time I've been scared. I spent all my time praying about the flying over the water, flying into a war zone and terrorism. The flight that almost killed me was the one from here to Miami. I I'll tell you about that sometime. Uh, I almost said words that I've been trying to forget. I'm trying to tell you folks, your faith can be little or great. Your, your faith can be over big things or little things, but we all have to have faith in God, confidence, trust. And I'm telling you what impresses God in the Bible, and the only time he's been ever impressed by man was a people's faith. The only time God gave man kudos and commendations, God would say, or Jesus would say, great is thy faithfulness. It's a requirement. It's essential. It's mandated for the child of God. The nature of faith, 
the broadness of faith, we just believe in things we can't always verify. But we do have some level of evidence. I, I, I've never seen God, but folks, I know there's a God somewhere. High in the Thomasville, can I sit here on earth and this earth is spinning 11 miles a second and I can sit here because of gravity that I can't explain and I don't have to be moved. How can I sit here 93 million miles from the sun? And you might not know this, the sun is so much bigger than the earth that almost a million earths can fit inside the sun. It's a blaze of glory. Folks, there's a God somewhere. How can I sit here on an earth this third planet from the sun. If we were any closer to the sun, we'd burn up. If we were any farther away from the sun, we'd freeze to death. The sun is, the earth is spinning and rotating at the same time. That's why we get summer, winter, spring, and fall, the four seasons. How can we sit here tonight and the moon work the night shift while the sun works the day shift? And the oceans are regulated, the waters, by the moon. There's a God. I've never seen God, but there's evidence there's a God. So look at your human body, all the intricacies, the billions and trillions of nerves and cells and red cells and white cells. And when we consider all the systems that are inside the human body, we we see the complexity of the human brain. The human brain is so fabulous, it can make computers. With all of that technology, the computer didn't make itself. Somebody's brain did that. Folks, I haven't seen God, but there's evidence he's there. That's all I'm saying tonight. Folks, you don't have to have blind allegiance and blind acceptance. There's enough evidence without you putting your finger on it that the evidentiary nature of our faith is God has given us enough nuggets that we can follow him and trust him through faith. Lastly, tonight, we talked first about the nature of faith. Now we talked about the evidential nature of our faith. Now the nature of a Christian faith, nature of a child of God's faith. Our faith, beloved, hear me good, has to be rational and intelligent faith. Don't ever base your faith or your walk with God on emotions alone. Feelings and emotions are integral. God, God allows us to have them, and he gave them to us. I, I don't like people who think you come to church and you don't have to have any emotion, any feeling. No, that's not how man is biologically constituted. And God wants your emotions to be involved, but you're not governed by your emotions. You see, once your emotions or your feelings trump your intellect, you're going to be in trouble. People that make decisions based on how they feel and don't use their brain as a part of that decision, they're in trouble. God expects us to use our minds. That's in Matthew 22 and 36. And it's important in the book of Ephesians chapter 2, verse number 8. By faith we are saved through faith. Uh, not of ourselves, but it's a gift of God. God's saying, listen, we, we use our intellect to even decipher how we're saved. How we saved, Paul? By faith are we saved through grace. Okay? Not grace alone. So I'm here to tell you tonight, folks, you have to be able to rationalize, connect dots. You have to do cognitive thinking, uh, intellectual uh, deciphering to exercise faith. Christians' faith are rational faith. It does not have to be radical faith. What are you saying, Brother Leonard? I'm trying to say the nature of a Christian faith. You don't have to have 100% proof to be 100% committed. Okay, I like that. Maybe we'll go with that tonight. You don't have to have 100% proof of something to be 100% committed to something. Mm, good example is marriage. When you marry some, date somebody, marry somebody, you get to know them pretty well, you still don't have 100% proof they're going to do right by you. But you got enough proof, or evidence rather, 
that you get, you can be a hundred percent committed to something you don't have a hundred percent proof of. That's all God is saying. I believe, I know there's a God. I know that, that God is real. I don't have a hundred percent. I couldn't go to a courtroom and start presenting exhibits after exhibits. I don't have empirical data. I don't have, um, God on a selfie on my phone. I don't have a uh, captured him like a cop on my cell phone, whether he's doing good or bad. I'm just saying to you, I don't have to have a hundred percent proof to be a hundred percent committed, but I do have to have some evidence. That's why I keep telling you tonight. Faith is not blind allegiance a blind acceptance. But we do have enough evidence, not 100%. We have enough evidence to give God 100% commitment. My trip to Jerusalem, I, uh, you see, life is all about assessing risk. That, that's what life is. Uh, uh, every time I get in my car, there's a risk. Well, I could be killed in an automobile accident. Every time I get on a plane, there's a risk. I could be uh, killed on a car on a plane crash. Uh, every time I step out of my house, there's a risk that one of your cousins could do me harm. Am I a hundred percent sure every time I drive I won't have an accident? Am I a hundred percent sure every time I fly that it won't crash? No. I don't have a hundred percent assurance from anybody or anything, but I am a hundred percent committed to those things. My lovely wife and I've been married almost 41 years. She don't have a hundred percent assurance, a proof of where I go and what I do. I don't have a hundred percent assurance of where she go and what she do, but I can be a hundred percent committed because I do have enough evidence. She has enough evidence of the character of the man she's married, and I have that of the character of the woman I'm married to. I, I, I got proof when I went to Jerusalem that Jesus did live. When I went to all over Israel, it helped my cognitive inf informational part of my brain that there was a man that was born in Bethlehem, lived, suffered, bled, and died. I learned and verified and substantiate that he's not just a philosopher and just not myths and he's not just a legend. There was a man, Jesus of Nazareth, and I believe who he is, he's the Christ, what he did. He died and rose the third day for my sins. It's our faith is not just what we believe, but who we believe. And so tonight, the essence of our faith, the nature of our faith, is trust. And even when we don't have substantial evidence, we trust. The evidence we do have, though, walking by faith and by sight, is that God has placed furniture in the house of a blind man that he knows the routine does not have sight. And that's what God has done. He's placed things in our life and in this world that we know he's real and he's real in our hearts. And the nature we want to possess, beloved, our nature is this. I don't have to have 100% proof to be 100% committed. I don't call it chance. I call it faith. I call it trust. You can trust God because without faith, it's impossible to please God. He that cometh to God must believe he is and that he's a water of them that diligently seek him. You can't be saved without faith and you can't stay saved without faith. You never been to heaven and you never visited hell, yet we believe they are so. Why? Because God said so. I leave you with the words of Wesley T. Leonard. Paul, Jesus, God, and the Bible have given us ample evidence 
of things we can't see. I capsule it in my own unique way. Faith is believing that something is so, even when it does not appear to be so, in order that it might become so, simply because God said so. Thank you for listening. I invite you to join us this Sunday at 11 a.m. If you're in Central Florida or you'll be visiting here, you can meet us at 4701 Raleigh Street. We have no technical difficulties in the building. And soon we'll have all of them eliminated online. But if you're not in this region and you want to participate, you've been very, very magnanimous in your participation with Southside, you can join us this Sunday, which would be the first Second Sunday, actually, in August, August 8th, you can join us live stream, Southside Facebook, Southside YouTube channel, Southside website, sscoc.org, Southside app. God bless you tonight. God keep you tonight. This is our prayer. Take care.